Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Little Boat Adventures. Just a quick recap on what we had done in our previous video. We had left our home port in Down Cruising Club in Strangford Lock, headed south out past Port of Ferry into the Irish Sea. We then headed north up the Irish Sea and around Donegadee Sound, past the Copelands and round into Bangor where we spent the night. The next day then we made our trip across the north channel of the Irish Sea across to the small town of Port Patrick. Uh, a bit of bad weather coming from the north then meant we had to spend more than the, the one night there. We were there actually for, for two nights um, and then we made the decision to plan our journey to take us from Port Patrick north up around into the Firth of Clyde up past the Ilsa Craig towards the Isle of Arran where we hoped to get a few days exploring the island before we had to turn and make our way back home. Good morning from Stranraer Marina. Uh, you notice it didn't say Lamlash, Lash, and that's because we didn't make it there. So, yesterday when we left uh, Port Patrick and headed north, uh, just as we got out of the harbour and turned, it wasn't too bad. The, the seas were a bit rolly, but once we kind of got out a bit further, um, we, we took a real beating. The waves consistently were. I would say up to two meters and we were getting up right on the nose i mean sometimes it felt like the boat was airborne it was just it wasn't very pleasant and um, although the forecast we checked that says the sea state was was um good to moderate and um, it wasn't nice at all now the winds were weren't blowing that hard it was only 11 knots kind of on the nose but the previous day it was kind of coming, the wind was blowing for the past 24 hours from the north and there's a lot of fetch there from the North Sea down into the North Channel so I think that was the, the leftovers of all that wind um, so we had planned just to motor, motor through it and then turn up towards Arran there was one occasion when we thought we would turn back and just go into Port Patrick and, and set it out until today but we thought if we turn back we're not going to make it to um, Aaron at all so we persevered and pushed through um, but it was a horrible horrible journey it, once we, we kind of turned up into the Firth of Clyde the waves did ease a bit but at that stage I think um, between a touch of the sun and a bit of sea sickness and um, Kelly wasn't feeling great so we thought rather than persevere another must have been another maybe six hours up to Aran we would just come down into Stranraer and take a take a bit of refuge so As we entered Loch Ren, the wind and sea stayed settled, and these dolphins playing about the bow of the boat were a welcome sight. We 
We were wrong to think our drama was over for the day and we actually run aground in between these two red lateral boys. As you can just about see, the sandbank extends further into the channel uh, than where the boys mark. Fortunately, a couple of guys passed in the sailboat were able to throw us a line and tow us off. We were then able to make it into the marina and tie up safely. So we stayed here in Stranraer last night. The weather today is there's just virtually very very little wind on the water and the uh, this is Loch Grand. The water here is very calm. I'd say on out and um, back up into Firth it wouldn't just be as calm but like I say we stayed here last night and rested and then we kind of thought about maybe today going on up into Iron but we're we're running out of time and um, we both start back to work in a few days so what we're going to do is we're going to stay here tonight and we're going to leave with the tide tomorrow and head back to Bangor and then from Bangor we'll stay a night and then on back round to our um, marine back in Strangford but one of the other things that has happened that um, stopped us from pushing on to iron as well is um, some of you re may remember in a previous video that I had a look at the fuel filter housing and I've replaced the seal. Um, I've, I've done that twice and I've tried a different seal and it's still leaking diesel and I feel like it's got worse. Um, just to show you. So in our journey from Port Patrick to here, this is what I suctioned out of the bilge and the sump tray underneath the engine. So we're losing a lot of diesel. We don't have a fuel gauge, so I can't estimate what what we're losing or what we have in the tank. And I'm worried in these unfamiliar waters, if we needed the engine a lot and run out of run out of diesel, then you know that could be disastrous. So that's kind of another reason that we're we're going to call um, going much further. Or going any further we're going to call it quits and just try and get home and we'll get the diesel leak fixed and always plan a, a trip <laughs> always um plan a trip for another time kelly's just back from using the, the showers <laughs> looking a little bag lady looking pretty well i didn't attempt to dry my hair but i made it a little oh it's beautiful Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so we're every every time we use the engine and then stop, we're having to um, use our little twelve volt pump to suck out this crap from from the bilge and the the little sump pan drip pan underneath the engine. So it's not good. We topped up the fuel tank yesterday and then topped this up and then we had the motor um, on. We motored hard up up the um, coast and then just kind of more or less idled it down and lock around here and then this morning I tapped up the fuel and we had to use a full, full one of these and we're still not full in the, the fuel tank yet so I'm going to top it up with this and hopefully um, that'll do but I'm going to have a, a tinker about with the fuel filter housing again see if I can tighten it up anymore or do something just to minimize the leak so what I actually ended up doing was taking the fuel filter housing apart checked around the rubber o-ring and seal it wasn't damaged so I fitted it back on and tightened the fuel filter back in place with the little locking nut and tightened that as, as firmly as I could but on reading a bit on forums apparently this is a problem with one of the Yanmar 2GM engines like we have that there is a problem with this locking nut um, whether it warps or something happens to it that there's a leak um, since getting home and replacing the whole fuel filter housing we haven't had any issues with leaks so it just seemed to be a problem with that so all it was left for us to do then was to top up the fuel like I'm doing here with our dibbler and then get a good night's sleep for the early start the next morning to make our way back home. Enemy tonight starts with freaking 
How's your adventures been? Hmm? How's your adventures been? So we left Stranraer Marina about 6 o'clock the next morning. We didn't film much because there's two large passenger carrying ferry terminals there. So we had to keep our eyes on what was going on around us. But shortly after leaving Loch Ryan, there was a biblical downpour. We got absolutely soaked and as I'm sure you can see here, it actually caused one of the life jackets to inflate. Um, but we got across the Bangor okay and we spent the night there. The next morning the sailing conditions were a lot better as you can see here. We were able to sail down the coast and back up into Port of Ferry. Thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave us a like. A special thank you to those people who have visited our coffee and Patreon pages. We really appreciate it. Um, and if you guys would like to see more of our videos, then please subscribe, click that bell, so you're notified when there's a new video released. And if you'd like to help us with the production of these videos, then consider visiting our coffee or Patreon pages. We'd really appreciate that. Thank you.